Every so often, I put a question and answer video out, and it's time for another one of those, so there's no need for any grand introduction. This is just people on my channel asking me questions, and I'm going to provide answers. Whether or not they're good answers, that's going to be up to you to decide. So, let's go ahead and jump in. The first question comes to us from BG, and BG asks, Do you think the standard toolbar will die out eventually? I love the standard toolbar menu button left and, and really hope it stays. So the answer to this question, which is basically, do you think the Windows paradigm will remain? I think the answer to that question is yes, until we no longer use computers. And when I'm talking about computers, I mean as they are now. It's possible once we move to like brain inserted computers or something that it will go away. I'm assuming it probably will because we'll need some new you know, input paradigms then, but as long as we're still using monitors in front of our faces, people are so used to that type of layout, it's probably going to stay. It's kind of like QWERTY on the keyboard. QWERTY is not the most ergonomic keyboard layout, nor is it the one that people can type the fastest on, you know, really, if they, you know, try hard. And, uh, but we couldn't change away from it. I mean, people are just so used to QWERTY, you can't change away from it by default. It just wouldn't be possible. Uh, the next one comes to us from, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to call you Arco Shaw. I have no idea how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry about that. Why Arco instead of Vanilla Arch? The answer to that question is really simple. And the answer is that I'm lazy. It's really, like I said, as simple as that. The thing is, I can install Vanilla Arch. It's not hard. But over time, you for like the first two or three weeks that you have Vanilla Arch installed, you'll always keep coming across pieces of the OS or distribution that you have forgotten to install. Whether it's like a Dunst or just little pieces that, that aren't necessary for the functioning of the distro itself but that you're going to need in order for certain pieces of software to work. And I don't like that experience. I just want my distribution to be ready to go from the day, you know, from the from day 1. And maybe if I was uh, so used to Vanilla Arch that I knew all the packages that I absolutely needed and could install them all at once and didn't have that experience, I'd be fine. But for the most part, it's just pure laziness. I prefer Arco. It works for me really well. Now I am about to distro hop probably tomorrow, so we'll see where I land then. But it's still going to be probably a, an Arch-based distro. Okay, the next one comes to us from Wild. I'm, again, probably mispronouncing your name. Have you thought about pursuing a Linux certification? The answer to that is no. Now I'm thinking about it. Maybe, someday, I don't know. It would be, I don't know that making videos on it would be really suitable for the audience that I've built so far, but I don't know, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see videos on something about Linux certification. You never know, maybe. Uh, the next one comes to us, to us from uh, Immortality. If you self-hosted a website, what OS distro would you choose? Now, see, the hilarious thing is I'm an Arch guy. Like, I'm an Arch-based distro guy, but I would not choose Arch for a server. So I'd probably choose Debian or Ubuntu. Probably Ubuntu. I, I like Ubuntu quite a bit more than I like Debian, so it'd probably be Ubuntu. Although, things like CentOS or maybe Fedora, not probably not Fedora, but CentOS or Red Hat would probably be a good idea too. I like all those. Uh, um, I, will t I will say that I really enjoy OpenSUSE. I've been using OpenSUSE now for a few days, and I really like it. Uh, I don't enjoy how slow their package management system is, so it, that would probably keep me from using it on a server. But if it, that was just a little bit faster... OpenSUSE would be my choice for a server as well, because the desktop version is really nice. Okay, so the next one comes to us from ArchMTG. Since you're in the stand into standalone window managers, would you consider making a, a video on TWM, Tab Window Manager? I think he may be talking about Tom's Window Manager. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, if, if you are talking about Tom's Window Manager, the answer to that question would be no. That's just the window manager that comes default with X server, and it's not good at all. It's, uh, from the things that I've seen, it's not good at all. Now, I've never used it, 
So it's possible that it's spectacular. But from the videos I've watched, it's just very, very basic. It's meant to be there for you to use in order to install something else, as far as I'm aware. If you're talking about something called Tab Window Manager, never heard of it. Okay, next one comes to us from Norther Tyrant. Okay, what's a good FOSS replacement for Gmail Outlook Mail services for you? Now, the answer to this question is there isn't one. Uh, email is not secure, even if you secure it with like PGP keys and stuff like that, it's still going to have weaknesses and stuff like that. So, in terms of open source, mm, your best hope there probably is to host it yourself because you can use a whole bunch of FOSS tool, tools in order to create an email server that would serve your stuff. Uh, that's quite a bit of work, although I know Luke Smith has a, like a script that will do it for you on like Ubuntu and Debian servers, so maybe you could use that. Um, I don't know if ProtonMail is open source. I couldn't speak to that. I don't think it is, but it's possible it is. I've never used it. I've never saw the point of paying for email. I've always been of the opinion that I know email is not secure, so I just give all my information to Google. So, I... <clears throat> You gotta remember, I start. I didn't start out as a FOSS guy. I was a Windows user. So when I was signing up for email for the first time, I think I I used Yahoo and then actually you know Hotmail was my first email address. And then I went to Yahoo and then I went to Gmail and I've just had Gmail ever since. So switching away now would be just a pain in the ass. As much as I hate Google, you know. All right, the next one comes to from Abdullah. Uh, I'm again if I pronounce your name wrong I apologize for that uh, why did you start this amazing channel first of all thank you for calling my channel amazing uh, second of all why did I start it? I started it for the podcast so uh, Ricky Williams and I uh, he's one of my friends we started a podcast for Linux in 2017 uh, I, I can't believe we've actually been doing the podcast since 2017 but it's true and uh, it had nothing to do with YouTube it was just an audio version we never did video we did it once a month and it was never thing anything serious we just did it for a while eventually we f fell away from doing that he and i still do podcasts for about movies and stuff like that but we just stopped doing the linux one about i would say maybe july of 2020 i went into the anchor fm back end where the podcast was hosted and realized that people were actually watching or listening to the episodes that had been posted. I was like, people are actually listening to this. I mean, it was like hundreds of people. It was really weird. Like, like, like these are really old podcasts. They're not edited at all. I didn't do any editing, like, at all, other than put some music at the front and the, in the back. That was it. So people were listening to it. So I decided, you know, I'm going to put some stuff on YouTube. I'm going to start making new episodes again. I made them, the beginning ones were all by, just being by myself. And that's when I started the, the YouTube channel. I started it for the podcast. Eventually, September of last year, I decided I was going to start making Linux videos. And I just did. I made them every single day from like October or something all the way to the end of the year. Uh, just like every single day. And it started growing. I mean, I, had, I think I had like 50 or 60 subscribers. And then it just kept growing and growing until I got to like 400. And then DT mentioned me on his channel. And it just... It, here we are, almost 5,000 subscribers later. So, uh, yeah, that's the reason why it was for the podcast. Okay, next one comes from to us from Daniel E. Have you ever used Gentoo? And if so, what is your opinion on it? I think uh, no would be the most proper answer there. I have tried to install Gentoo on stream before. It still remains, I believe, my top-rated stream. Although that Linux Mint one is probably close. Yeah, I didn't succeed in installing it, so I can't say that I've used it. So, no, I've never installed Gentoo. My opinion on it is that their fan base is very loyal. I love those guys. Uh, the next one comes from No Palfi. No Palfi? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to butcher your name. I apologize for that. Uh, does new Linux YouTuber will have a chance to grow? Or uh, Okay. I think what this person is asking is... If you started a Linux uh, YouTube channel, will you have a chance to grow, or is it just better to, you know, watch other people? I'm I'm not actually sure what you're asking, so I apologize for that. If you are thinking about starting a Linux YouTube channel, I highly recommend doing it. If if you want to, I mean, it, don't expect to be like a, a a 
you're not the next Mr. Beast, okay? You're just not going to, that's not going to happen. You're not the next Linus Tech Tips. Uh, don't have those expectations because you're just going to get disappointed. When I went into it, I expected nobody to watch it all. And, oh man, just, just the, every time my videos got like 20 or 30 views, I was like, ah, that's so great. I was like, I was so happy with 20 or 30 views. And uh, when I got to, when I had a video, I, I did a top five Linux distros of 2020 last year. And the number one distro on there was Arco. And the Arco guy shared it. And that video got 500 views like in the first week. And I was just astonished. I was so happy. I was like, that's, I went viral at that point. <laughs> it felt like going viral. It was so stupid. Uh, nowadays, if I have a video that go, that has gets like 700 views, I'm disappointed. And it's just, it, it's so silly because I used to be just so ecstatic. And I try to keep very humble about it because I don't want to get greedy. I don't want to keep saying, well, I, I don't want to take the growth that I keep experiencing for granted. So I try to not be so upset when a video doesn't do very well. Like the, the, five ways to fix linux youtube uh fix fix linux youtube a uh, five when it, five ways to fix youtube comments that video just absolutely bombed it was my worst video since like march i mean him the the youtube algorithm just did not like the fact that i was criticizing youtube for some reason so that video just i mean it didn't get 400 views and <laughs> i've been averaging like 1200 views on a on videos so that I was really disappointed in that but I try not to be one videos like that so uh, if you are going to start a YouTube channel my number one recommendation is have no expectations uh, be very thankful for every view every subscriber that you get you'll be much happier in the end uh, and that's the way I try to be I don't always succeed but I try okay and the last one also comes to us from Abdullah from before who is your favorite Linux you or excuse me they ask, uh, who is your favorite YouTuber, not Linux YouTuber? So my favorite YouTuber. This is a really, really hard question. Now, if you're just asking my favorite Linux YouTuber, I don't know if I could name my favorite Linux YouTuber because I'd have to, I mean, I, I could go the, the, the friend route. So I have a couple friends that I've made. So like the, the Terminal for Life is great. Zany is great. You should definitely subscribe to those guys. And they could be qualified as favorites. If you're talking about bigger than those guys, maybe DistroTube or Brody Robertson. I like both of those guys as well. Now, if we're going to open this up to all of YouTube, it gets a much, much harder. Because I watch a, a disproportionate number of YouTube videos every day. Like, I shouldn't watch as much YouTube as I do because I should actually do work during those times. But I watch a lot of YouTube videos. So... If you had, if I had to choose one, I would probably choose the history guy. History deserves re to be remembered. Now, this channel here, which I'll link to in the video description, is, is done by a historian who, who just is a fantastic storyteller. And for those of you who don't know, my degree is in history. So uh, I really enjoy in-depth history stuff. And you can't get that on TV anymore. The History Channel used to be about history, and you could watch all, you know, uh, Engineering an Empire or Ancient Aliens or um, all these great history stuff on the History Channel. Now it's like Pawn Stars and Ice Road Truckers. Like, what the fuck does Ice Road Truckers have to do with history? I don't know. It's dumb. Like, at least with Pawn Stars, you can you can see that they at least know something about history and then proceed to be assholes about getting as much money out of people as possible. But the Ice Roll Trekker things I don't understand. But anyways, the the history guy is amazing, and he's just one of several history channels that I actually follow. He's really good. And you have no idea that that cut scene between me saying if I had to just choose one and then actually choosing one, that was about 20 minutes of me thinking about it for a while because I could really probably choose about... 40 other ones that I just watch way too much. There's one uh, called the Perkins Builder Brothers, and they build houses, and I just sit there and watch them build houses. Like, I'm never going to build a house, okay? But by hand, if I was going to have a house built, I'd have somebody else build the house. I have no uh, tech talent or talent about for building a house at all. Uh, but I like watching them build houses. It's a stupid thing. It's a good channel. Uh, so anyways, uh, 
favorite YouTube channel. I I, I would say the History Guy, but uh, I have so many. I, I really couldn't choose. Uh, I could have went the arrogant route and said, well, of course, my channel is the best channel. Uh, definitely subscribe. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. That's all the questions that I have. So thanks everybody for watching. I can't believe I made it to th this point uh, and actually rumbled on for this long. But anyways, if you want to, uh, if you want to ask any more questions, you can do so in the comments of this video, and I'll try to remember to uh, look at them the next time I make a Q and A video. You can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at Patreon.com/LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Patrick L., Marcus, Manglin, Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Steve A., Mitchell, Art Center, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, and the BSD's Rock. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.